back to Rating the List, where we review, discuss, and reimagine popular movie lists objectively. We're your hosts, I'm Jerry. And I'm Brad. And on this episode, we're going to be exploring number 85 from AFI's 100 Years, 100 Passions, the top 100 love stories of all time. Number 85, Love is a Many Splendored Thing, directed by Henry King, starring William Holden and Jennifer Jones. So the synopsis of this romantic autobiographical drama is as follows. In the late 1940s, during China's Civil War, widowed doctor Han Su Yen, played by Jennifer Jones, and married but separated American correspondent Mark Elliott, played by William Holden, meet at a cocktail party. They begin spending time together and soon fall in love. After a brief period of happiness, she gets ostracized by the greater Chinese community in Hong Kong and her family on the mainland. She loses her position at the hospital and moves in with a friend along with her adopted daughter. Elliot is called to assignment in Korea to cover the war. They write often. Eventually, she receives word he's been killed in a bombing. She goes to visit their favorite hill. She goes to visit their favorite hilltop meeting place to remember him and their time together. Um. Yeah. So this was a movie. This was a movie. It was super boring. It was. So freaking dry. So dry. The and dialogue it, was atrocious. And it's like it's amazing. You have these two actors who like she was nominated for five Academy Awards for this movie. Uh, I th- she was nominated for this movie, I think, but and he was oh. nominated like four times. Okay. So she had a she had kind of a quickie career. So she had like a a, a, a real like peak for about ten years. Um, she was uh, married to David O. Selznick, who was okay. a big um, studio head. And after he died, she kind of, you know, kind of went off the, mm. you know, the radar a little bit. Um, the last movie, she, she did make like a brief comeback. She, like she's in like the Towering Inferno. It's like the last thing she ever did. Mm-hmm. Um, she lived a really long life. She was like in her 90s when she passed away. Wow. Um but, you know, it's just like for the, the, the caliber of the people you have in this movie. For, and this, uh, you know, she's boring. Yeah, she plays a Eurasian, which she says over and over they, again they in this ha- movie. They tell you this. I'm not kidding. Like, at least 15 times they have to mention that she's Eurasian. Yeah, I feel like this movie was really trying to be woke. Yeah. And it really wasn't. Yeah. It really was still very racist. Yeah, there, there's a lot of racist stuff in this movie um it's not as bad as some of the stuff that we've gone over but you know it's just i mean i i'm pretty sure they shot this on location in hong kong it really Mm -hmm. looks like Mm -hmm. they did um so good on them and the majority of the cast are you know you know chinese american actors it seems Mm -hmm. like and probably some um you know foreign chinese uh, actors as well like yeah it was filmed in 1955 so that was yeah Fairly, that was good. fairly progressive on that front. The, the the coolest thing is we're watching it, and there's this scene where she travels um, from Hong Kong to the mainland to you know introduce him to her family and kind of you know speak about her intentions with him. And like one of the people in her family is James Hong. Like this. Yeah, like, we're like, early, hey, we know that guy. Look, it's Lo Pan. <laughs> um, I actually met him. Oh, how cool. Like uh, 98, 99, somewhere around there. Oh, wow. I met him at a convention. Super cool guy. That's cool. I mean, he's he's 93 years old, and he is still working. Like, they're doing another um, Kung Fu Panda movie, and he's voicing, he's still doing voice work. Yeah. I think he was in all of those. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, dude's 90, he would just, he did a voice in uh, that, um, that movie. Oh, yeah. Um, The Red. The Red. Oh, God. Panda movie. Red. Red something. Seeing Red? Seeing Red. There you yeah. go. Yeah, thank you. He did a voice in that movie. I mean, the, the dude has been working. I, I, I have to imagine this is one of his first roles. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he has no he has no lines whatsoever. He doesn't mm-hmm. speak at all. He's just like in the background. Yeah. Just like, I was just like, hey. Hey, that guy. I do that a lot when I'm watching like classic movies. Mm-hmm. I was talking with her about this. Like, I, lo- I love to watch um, classic movies um, and like look in the background and then like sit through the credits and you see someone who later becomes like a big like actor. a big deal yeah like one of the movies we have upcoming uh, um in a like i think it's like number 82 or something that is witness and we just watched that a few nights oh, ago yeah. 
and a really young Viggo Mortensen just shows yeah, up. Yeah, we were like, oh my god, and he plays an Amish dude. Has we were no, like, what? Has no speaking role whatsoever. He's just one of the, you know, one the of brothers or something. Basic, <laughs> ba- basically, he's like a glorified extra in the movie. Yeah. But then, you know, later on, you know, they become like a big actor, and you're like, oh yeah, I remember yeah, seeing that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Or you see people like, you know, like you saw like Matt LeBlanc on that, like, Heinz commercial. Back oh, yeah. In the day, stuff yeah, like that. I was like, whoa. Um, I always find that that interesting and fun to to see who was in a movie way back when and then they yeah. kind of show up and become bigger later and then you like go back and watch the movie you're like I had no idea they were in this movie yeah um, I also think that they didn't give them enough time together yeah like it was like this big old love affair which we only saw like a little sliver of right and then he died so it was like it wasn't enough time to really yeah. see how how yeah, we, much in love they were. We basically we saw them on like one like two dates. Mm-hmm. Like we saw them on their first date wasn't even like really a date mm-hmm. per se. It was just kind of him trying to convince her that he, she should go on a date with him, like yes. a real date with them. Yes. Then they go on a date and you get it like to some degree like why she's being ostracized cuz she's already kind of ostracized a little bit because she's not you know full blood Chinese Mm -hmm. so she's already got some stigma around her and then you know the the people in Hong Kong don't like the fact that she's you know going around with a married man separated you know but still married and then her family when they're on the mainland are not happy that she's not you know getting together with a Chinese man so they, they don't play that up enough. I mean, that that's like legitimate real world stuff. Mm-hmm. You, see, you still see that happening today in mm-hmm. some in some cultures. Um, and I just, yeah, I, I agree. There's just like build up the relationship a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they like, didn't build it up at all. Make me understand why these two fall in love with each other. Yeah, and it's just, like, this very, very slow pace. Yeah. And it's, like, even their walk up to the hill is at a slow pace. Yeah. And it's just, like, it's, like, okay, is this all there is? Yeah. Like, that's one, it? One of the things I'm, I've been finding with some of these older movies mm-hmm. is they just assume because they tell you that these people are in love that you're supposed to buy it. And that's not how a really good love story no. works. Like, you know, we were just, we just, you know, we, we did uh, an episode of The Bridges of Madison County, you know, a few episodes back, and the way that they fall in love and how quickly they fall in love is very similar to what happens in this one, but, but it's you buy so that, you buy that, you buy the hell out of it yeah. because of the way that the actors interact with each and other, and how the, much chemistry how they much have, how much chemistry they have, and it's just like, you just don't feel that here, it's just like, all of a sudden, they're in love, and yeah. you're supposed to just... Be like, except, oh, okay. Except that they're in love. It's yeah, like, it's it's not. I did not find it very good, and uh, I probably will never watch it again ever. I mean, this is one I think would be ripe for a remake. I think you could really, really do this movie, some this story, some justice. Uh, when I was looking up some information about it, um, the book there is a book. It was in, from nineteen. 19- Fifty-two, so just a few years before they made this movie, and it was written by Han Su Yin. So, which leads me to, like I was telling you, I'm pretty sure this is an autobiographical mm. story. So, go back to the source material. There are plenty of, you know, Amerasian, Eurasian actresses that you could, you know, get to fit the bill, or you could just go all Asian and, you know, fake it that way. No one's gonna be pissed off that you do that. Um, I think you could really do this movie a lot of justice now. I think you'd have to find somewhere else to to be a stand-in for Hong Kong in the 1950s because it don't look like that anymore. I mean, it's a super advanced, you know, metropolitan yeah. city now. Back then, it was a much more kind of pastoral-looking place. Well, maybe you could do it with other cultures, like instead of doing it with an Asian culture, maybe, like, you know, do, like, a hot spot, you know? Like, Middle Eastern culture and... Maybe, but I mean... You know? But I mean... I don't think you need to, to change that part of it up. You need to find two actors that have really great chemistry and... That's really And the big really, thing. like, make us believe that, you know, one, like, she doesn't want to, like, at first explore a relationship with him because... 
you know, he's still married, and that's a whole thing back then, and legitimately so. Mm-hmm. And really play up, you know, the the pressures against them, you know, her colleagues and community in Hong Kong, her family on the mainland. She loses her job. I mean, she, she gives up everything mm-hmm. to be with this guy, and then, you know, he gets sent away, and you really don't get a whole sense of it really affecting her life. She's just like, there's like two scenes where she's like living with, you know, this friend of theirs on this like beachfront property. It looks really, really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, she's adopted this girl. They really don't go into that all that much. No, like, they don't. Like. Because she was sick. She was one of her patients. Yeah. And she, you know, her parents were killed and all that kind of stuff. And she just takes this girl on. It's like, okay, there's no, like, paperwork or anything. We just yeah, take random refugee weird. girls without, you know, any documentation. Yeah. Okay, that's how that works. Um, there's some stuff to like about this movie. I think it's really beautifully shot. Mm-hmm. I, I think mm-hmm. I think it looks really good. Um, I think their performances are okay. They just don't have a whole lot of chemistry They're, together. The dialogue, the is writing is bad. Terrible. It's real. Re- it's real bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. Yeah. It's like one little liners, and they're supposed to be like poetic and beautiful, and they just come out flat. Yeah, yeah it's it's a lot of flat dialogue in this mm-hmm. movie. So this is one I think a remake would do justice to get a good writer preferably an like an asian writer who understands mm-hmm. you know at least at the very least understands that culture maybe you know someone who has some historical context to play back on as well um you know get a asian director to take this on um i think you could do a lot of different things with it um that they weren't able to do in this movie and they just didn't really pull off. I think, I, th- I think you could pull it off. I mean, you know, I don't know if I'd be interested. It's not, it's not, you'd be super... interested if they got some dude that you're horny for. Oh, come on. Yes, you would. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I gave this movie a 50. Jerry gave it a 47. Therefore the list gives it a 48.5. Um, so that's what we have to say about Love is a Many Splendored Thing. If you have any comments, leave them below. Please like and subscribe. And you can also reach us at ratingthelist at gmail.com. We'll be sure to respond there as well. Until next time, I'm Brad. I'm Jerry. And we're Rating the List. See you later. Bye. <laughs>